Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So this is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Crochet Classic Beret. This is using sock yarn. Sock yarn. What are you thinking for a hat? I love wearing sock yarn. So this is one of those things where it just fits you ever so lightly and just just hugs every possible curve that you have when you think about socks. But actually having something made with sock yarn is as a long lasting project. So here we have Julia. She's one of the Yarnspirations designer. Has come up with the concept here that is a brand new design for 2021. And what we have is a two pages of instructions. So what I've decided to do for you is a little worksheet that we're going to go through because I don't want to overcomplicate the uh, pattern for you because I don't need to. But where it gets a little bit complicated in your head here is that you see 12 around and it says keep repeating and establish until 204 single crochets around. So you have to continually increase. So what I've done is that I've created a worksheet for you so that you can be able to check it off in the list. Now there's a lot of written instructions here but the fact is it's not that hard. And so my little worksheet that I have for you is going to be addressing that too. So we're going to be using as a continuous spiral so that we don't ever see a seam line. So that's really well thought of too so that you don't have a, a line on the top of your hat. So you'll just be using a stitch marker or in my case just spare yarn in order to be able to mark that as we go. So we're gonna be using two size crochet hooks today. You're gonna be using a size C, a point, uh, 2.75 and then a D, a 3.25 millimeter. So we're gonna be starting off with the larger hook which is a D because C is smaller than D. So what we have here is that we are using uh, Croy socks FX and I just have a regular Croy sock here. So I check the actual uh, yardage on the ball itself and so this will work. So the blue would be kind of a nice idea. And so you'll need two balls of the Peyton's Croy socks. And yes it's thinner yarn but this yarn has nylon in it. So therefore it'll be a very long lasting project. So let me show you my worksheet and then we're going to go through this pattern. So right here over here is my worksheet. So this is just a mathematical calculation based on Julie's instructions. So I'm not rewriting anything. So what I've done is here is see these uh, yellow boxes. That's when there's an increase. So two single crochets into the same stitch and then one single crochet into the next. So this is round number three. So then in round number four this is when it gets a little complicated. Now the reason why the instructions look complicated is that if you always constantly increase on the same access point each time you end up with a hexagon in this case. So what we're doing here is that we are continuing to change the location of the increase so that it will be more circular in motion. So it's just one of those ideas. So the first time it'll be two single crochets into the first stitch, one on its own. Then the next time around it's one single crochet into the first one, two single crochets into the next and then one into the one after that. And then the next one is two into the first one and then three stitches in a row and we keep repeating. Here's what I wanna tell you though. Let me just uh, bring you closer to this sheet so you can see. So in round number four let's use this as an example. So it's going to be one single crochet into the first one, two single crochets into the next one, one single crochet in the next one and you repeat. So you go one into the next one, two into the next one and then one and then repeat. Here's the thing. I get confused on these uh, columns here. I want to maintain that circle. So what I do after I, I do it in my head is that I say one single crochet into the first one, two into the next one and then what I've done for you is that I marked how many stitches that are in a row before you do the repeat again. But if you think about it it's just one into the next, one into the next and then two. So what I'll do is that two single crochets into the same one and then two in a row that are on their own and then two into the same one two in a row that are on their own. So you'll see this happening again in round number six. So two single crochets in a row, two into the next one, two single crochets in a row. So the two plus two equals four. So after you get the first two done you put two into the next one and then four in a row and then two into the next one and then four in a row. Just gotta keep in mind when you come back all the way around this number here is going to be the number of stitches that are left over before you end up coming back all the way around for the stitch counts. So this is what I've done for you. So hopefully this is going to make sense to you. So I've just highlighted that for you. So what I have here is that we have all the way and it said after the 12th round to increase. So what I've decided for you is that I left you this information 12 or 12 all the way to 34 and this will give you the stitch counts that Julia is talking about. So this is just an easy way to be able to confirm that. So as I'm going through I'm going to circle it and check it off that I've just finished the instruction and then I move on in the sheet. 
after you get to row number 34 then what you're going to do is that you need to inc uh, do four rounds of just single crochet there. So that's what we need to do. So four rounds. I actually had that written there for a few moments. So four rounds. I will update the sheet of single crochet after you finish round number 34. Then what's going to happen is that you then have to do the decrease. So same thing. 16 single crochets in a row. Single crochet two together the next. Then 16 in a row. So what I would do then is that once you do the first 16 single crochet two together 16 and 16 equals 32. So I would just say single crochet together 32 single crochets on their own single crochet two together 32 on their own and then you'll have the final 16 left by the time you get all the way around. So this is going to be the decreasing as we're coming all the way back. So I put the physical round numbers here so that you can check it off and then once you get to the end of here you are going to change to the smaller hook which is the size C and just crochet for one inch in order to get that band to fit beautifully. So that's what we're gonna do and let's just get ourselves started and then once I get you started then you can just go through the checklist and do it on your own. As we begin just pull up the yarn from the ball and just pull maybe about 12 in, uh, about 12 inches there and cut this and you're gonna use this as a stitch marker. You don't wanna use regular size yarn because this is thinner that matches the gauge of this yarn. Now what I do recommend for you because this is a wearable do follow the gauge that's on uh, that is in this pattern. So the gauge is 22 single crochet by 24 rows. So all you just need to do is crochet uh, that in order to figure that out. So just do your gauge. So we're going to then begin and we're gonna start with the stem using the larger hook and we're going to begin the journey. So we're just going to start with a slip knot and I need you to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now we're gonna slip stitch second chain from the hook and slip stitch all the way to the end of the chain. So just go second chain. So one and two go to the back hump of the chain. I love working with sock yarn. So I just wanna slip stitch all the way down. And once you get more in your hand it's easier to hold as well. That's the thing about sock yarn when you start working with it it gets a little cumbersome in your hands. But the result is undeniable. So people email me often and they say well can I use like a, a, an acrylic for sock yarn and stuff instead this has nylon in it so that nylon is what holds this yarn together forever. And you're gonna come all the way to the end like that. And let's begin the next part of this pattern. So we're now going to begin round number one. So I've not turned the project and all I'm just going to do is start immediately in the same last stitch where the um, where the slip stitch is and I want a single crochet a total of three times. So we're gonna say one and two three four, five, and six. And what I recommend to you on the last one here, the sixth one, just put that stitch marker that we had made right into that spot. And so that will signify when you come all the way around on your project. So just leave it hold, holding there and then just put this back onto the hook and then we're going to begin round number two. So round number two we're gonna establish our first total round around. <laughs> Does that make any sense? So here we go. So I need you to count back then to the sixth stitch to know where to start. So just count it back so we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So just let that um, that tail fall to the back side and let's count again. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And that is where I'm going to uh, single crochet the first one. Make sure that you pull your stitches tight after you've gone all the way around. 
to make sure that you don't end up with a large space. So by the time I get all the way to back to that stitch marker that has been marked there should be a total of 12 stitches. So there's two in each. So there's one and then I go to the next one and I put two into that one. And then the next one. And then this is the one that's marked with the stitch marker. It's the last one. And so you'll put two into that same one, the very last one. And on the very last stitch when you come all the way around and you'll wanna do this each and every time, move up your stitch marker to the last stitch so that you can always see where you've finished. You can always do the first stitch but I always like doing the last. And so I would verify you now have 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And there it is. So I don't need to count like that every time. I just wanna make sure that we're starting off on the right foot. So we're going to then begin round number three. And round number three is when we start going to the diagram or, or to the charting that I did. So we're now ready then for round number three and you can read it on the instructions too. So round number three, there's going to be an increase. So there's gonna be two into the first one and then one on its own. And so we'll be doing that continually all the way around. So 12 so will then go into uh, uh, multiply. So it'll be 18. So two in the first one, one into the next. So let's please do round number three. So I'm just gonna get you started on this concept and then I'm gonna let you go through the worksheet on your own. So back to the project. So the first one out in this round is gonna be two into the first one. So one and two into the same stitch and then one on its own. And then the next one is two into the same one. So one and two and then the next one is one on its own. And so you'll do that all the way around. Now when I did this round, I'm coming all the way around so I got two into the last, uh, to this one. Now because this row is like a number three, it could be like a number five or seven where we are just uh, having our exponential to start right in the beginning. So two into the first one. The last stitch will always, uh, will never end up as a uh, two into the same stitch. So when I did the last one here, see there's two into this one, there's one on this one on its own. So just keep that in mind when you're going to work that all the way through. And then move up your stitch marker and we're going to begin number four. So in row number four, the first stitch is gonna be on its own and then there's gonna be two into the next stitch and then one on its own. Remember what I said in the very long intro is that once I get to this one here, I just gonna know that there's gonna be two single crochets in a row before I do the increase. So it's this one plus this one and then the increase. So what I would do if you're using my sheet, just go here so do the first one, go here and then just jump to this red number and that kind of tells you that same information but it's an easier way to count it in your mind. So round number four, let's establish ourselves. So there's gonna be starting, it's the first one, it's on its own and then two into the next one. So you can follow Julia's instructions and just say one into the next one and then the repeat starts again and then one into the next one and then two in th into there or you can just do it nice and simple. So I just put two in here and look at the red number and the next uh, two stitches in a row or single crochet. And then the next one has to be two into the same one. And you're gonna do that all the way around. So it's gonna be one and two on its own and then two into the next one and so when you're coming all the way around, the next stitch is on its own here. So if you're keeping in count, the, that third column there where it said, let me just pull the sheet up here. So it says that there's one. So after the last repeat, sorry, after the last increase when you're coming all the way around, this is how many stitches should be left over before you finish. So in my case, I got two into this one here and there's one stitch left. I can tell by the stitch marker. So that means that there's one on its own. So you're gonna move up that stitch marker. So let's uh, talk about uh, doing the repeat because all you just need to do is follow the worksheet going forward. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna leave you here. So I just left you on number four. So you're just gonna start with number five. So there's gonna be two into the first one and then three on its own two into the next one and then three on its own and you'll do that all the way around. Number six, you'll start off with two on its own, 
then two into the next one and then two on its own. But I would go from just do your first two, your increase and then look at this number. So and that's two and two to give you four. And then when you come back all the way around there should be two stitches left before you end up at the starting point all over again. So I want you to just continue to go check this off on your list. There's no point filming all this because honestly you can just look at the sheet and just count it out as you go. And when I see you then I'll meet you near to the end of this and we're gonna do four rounds of single crochet next. So please just follow the worksheet and continue the journey. When I last left you we were just starting out in the middle and you would have saw a correction that this little pointy thing should have been on the side facing me. So when I did the video I tucked it underneath when it should have been on top. So I had to frog that and put that back on top. So I put that warning for you. So you should be seeing it as you're crocheting around. So my sheet is done here. So this is the first one and I've gone all the way down and I've done into row number 34. Checked it off and I did four rounds of just straight single crochet. So that's where we are where that's where I am on the project right now. So now I'm gonna flip the page and I'm going to go to the decreasing rounds which is still just as straightforward as this. So hopefully this is straightforward. <laughs> if not, oh oh spaghetti yo. And what we're going to do is we're going to progress now to round number 39. So round number 39 we're reading the sheet the same way I just colored the boxes a little bit differently in colors. So it'll be 16 single crochets in a row. The next is single crochet two together. So two, two stitches become one and then 16. So like I did before after I got this section done. So I just 16 and 16 gives 32. So after I do the first 16 in this one I just say 32 single crochets are in a row and then single crochet two together. Round number 40 we're going to do single crochet two together and then 31 then and then two together and then 31 and you're gonna work your way all the way down this particular one here. Once you get all the way to the end of this instruction all you're just going to do is then change the hook to the smaller hook and do approximately one inch at just one single crochet around. The nice thing as you can appreciate if you've been doing this is that it took a little bit of time to get to the size so we're not going all the way backward just a partial way just to get that beautiful lip that uh, essentially a bray has. So I wanna show you a little bit of a tip as you're beginning and I'll show you the single crochet two together but I'm gonna show you a tip on how to avoid the obvious line that will happen when you use that stitch. So round number 39 it says 16 are in a row so let's just do this. So um, I'm just gonna move my stitch marker up to where I was just sitting. I was just sitting in my TV room doing that. So now I know where it is. And so the 16th, uh, 16 in a row. So one, 2, 14, 15 and 16. So the next two are going to be come together. So I'm going to bring you in even closer because I really wanna show you what you can do. Use these single crochet two together. You go into a stitch and you can do it this way if you want to. It's just go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. Go to the next one and pull through and you have three loops and you pull through all three. That's a single crochet two together. But to get a seamless look for decreasing and I highly recommend it and a friend showed me this before a long time ago is that when you go to the first one just go to the front loop only. So from underneath just grab the front loop and then circle around and go to the very next stitch underneath the front loop only and there you go. And then yarn over pull through both of those loops and then pull through. And that makes it pretty much invisible. So let me show you that again. Okay, so you just go into the front loop only from the bottom and then circle around and grab the next stitch from the bottom front loop only, yarn over and then pull through two. That's a single crochet two together. So because this is the 39th round then in this case then the next 32 are single crochet uh, one in each and then you'll do the single crochet two together over the next two stitches. So you're gonna do that all the way around. So when you get all the way around then you'll move on to round number 40 and then really the first two are single crochet two together and then you will have then 20, uh, what is it that we have here? Then there will be 31 stitches and then two together and 31. So just work backwards on that sheet and get yourself all the way to 53. It's pretty straightforward and hopefully it makes sense for you. So I'll see you then at the end of this project. So you're just going to continue this, go all the way to the 53rd round and then switch your hook to the smallest hook and just do one single crochet in each stitch for about one inch and that will be the brim of your beret. 
So I'm now at the part where I'm actually done. So I've done my brim area here. This was one single crochet for about one inch. Now I stopped moving my stitch marker about the one inch mark because I just had to go around and around and I could tell when I was all the way around. Here's the thing is that I was a little bit loose with my crochet stitches uh, coming to this you know in time you start to relax. So my brim was a little bit too big. So what I did and somebody's gonna message me on this I can guarantee it so I'm just gonna say it here. So if you look at the center point of the hat like so the what you can do during the brim section just start decreasing. So put two together here, here, here and here and then just try it on and see if it's going to be satisfactory. If it's not then the next time just do here, here, here and here is two together. And what this is doing is that it's pulling it in to be tighter. So now this actually fits my head. So I actually had to do that four times. So maybe that's how loose I am. <laughs> um, but actually this turned out really quite lovely. So at the very end of the project what you're going to do here is that you're gonna come pretty much close to where you had finished and I'm just going to just snip my yarn and I want to just put this into my hook and I want a slip stitch than the last one. So this isn't the same size hook because I left it on my desk. So I'm just gonna pull, it's a slip stitch so I'm okay with that. So I'm just gonna pull through. Now I want to put this through a tapestry needle and turn it to the inside so you can see where I jump balls. So I actually did go into a third ball because I was a little bit loose. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> and uh, you know somebody has to learn to do his gauge. And I know with this smaller yarn I'm always a little bit loose with it. So my hook is actually not even the same size that it should have been. Actually I, I reduced my hook down to a three millimeter which is uh, smaller than it should have been and I was still a little bit too big. So if that happens to you I'm sorry to say that you're not that special. <laughs> um, you know it actually turns out really quite lovely. And uh, then you can just remove your stitch marker just by pulling it out and this will be then the end of the beret. So hopefully you enjoy and this is Mike on behalf of the Crochet Crab. Make sure that you do uh, uh, secure all your loose ends and then enjoy your new hat. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon.